come soup. We've been trying to get in contact about your car's extended warranty. I'm going to get in contact Wait. with your car's extended <laughs> ass. I, do you feel bad for those salespeople, or do you just hate them? Because I, I, I go I, back I know, and I, I know they're really just trying to make money, them. but they get paid regardless, right? Well, so I, figured, so I fuck with them when they call me. I, like, start reciting Shakespeare. Oh, my God. And if they act like an asshole to me, then I get mad. But if they just, like, accept it, then it's okay. This looks like a job for Superman, guys. I'm going to kill myself. Thank you. See you later. You know, Wait, there whoa, is a whoa. Superman comic where he helps with that. <laughs> he has super yeah. suicide yeah. powers, yeah. as we know. Did kill me? <laughs> so, let's talk, about, let's talk about Superman 64. And, of course, there's, a, there's actually an interesting story behind Superman in, in relation to video games as a whole. Why? Uh, the first Superman game to ever be developed was made for the Atari 8-bit family of systems, and it was a tie-in game for the Superman 3 movie. Oh so God. you would fly around and you fought a giant supercomputer who was burning down Metropolis, and you had to like stop the stop his electro waves from making it to Metropolis while dodging crypto beams. Yeah. Uh, the game was canceled after it was already completed because why. Superman 3 did so poorly that they decided it wasn't worth distributing. <laughs> so game did not do very well and ever since then Superman has had a rocky history when it comes to video games Whoa. so uh, yeah the the next Superman game to come out was for the Atari 2600 it was just like you played a Superman Lex Luthor blew up a bridge or whatever you had to repair the bridge beat up Lex Luthor turn back into Clark Kent and meet with uh, Lois Lane in the in the fastest time possible um, Critics said it was all right, but it's an Atari 2600 game. So back then, there was not a lot you could really the do. The bar was low. The bar was low. The bar was in hell. <laughs> I raise you Custer's Revenge. Custer's Revenge was a worse game. That's definitely true. But, um, yeah. So <laughs> Wait, wasn't that like the porn game? <laughs> yeah, where you raped the bitch <laughs> on the cactus? Literally? <laughs> Please. <laughs> literally? Liter literally? Literally. All right. Anyways. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, let's get to back to our focus. This, let's get let's find our main protagonist of the story, a man named Eric Kahn. At the age what? of 14 in 1980s, he started making games. And at age 19 in 1985, oh. Jackson, you all right? Uh, so, we're talking about the history of the game itself, not like the like the plot. We're talking about everything related to Superman 64. Rad. Okay. okay, so Eric Kahn, he was, in, at, at the age of 19, he founded a company called Titus with his brother, Hervé. And, uh, yeah, he would make games. Uh, the most notable games that they made were, like, the Virtual Chess series, Lamborghini World Challenge, shit, Crazy notable. Cars, probably games you not you haven't heard of. They yeah. were a middleware company, so they made very, more obscure games, but they would go on to buy out different companies. And uh, they would buy out Blue Sky Software, who you probably know best for the MLB 2K franchise, the, the baseball games. Jackson. Please. It's really hot. Just ignore me, please. Okay. It's not hot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I lost my focus. You were they bought saying. out Interplay, who you might have known for making, uh, shoot, what they made Boulder's they Gate, made they made Alone in the oh. Dark, they made oh. Clay Fighter 63 and a Yo. third. Clay, yep. fi Clay, Clay Fighter? Yeah, that's fucking sexy. So we're talking about a lot of a lot of developers here uh, that they that they eventually bought out, and they were they they were probably most known like Titus the company was probably most known for like making ports of different games. So they did an SNES port of Prince of Persia. Oh my god! Uh, I don't actually have any other examples of games they ported, but that's about it. Yeah. Uh, but they were they they did mostly game, ports of other games, and when they weren't doing that and weren't making their own original games, uh, they were doing licenses for games. They got licenses for Robocop, for the Blues Brothers, Kasparov, Top Gun, and two times they got a license for Superman. The first time they made a Game Boy game where it was just like a mediocre platformer where you would travel from one end of the stage to the other. Yes, Tyler. How big was this company? Like, how much money were they making? Would your average 10-year-old gamer know about them? Your average 10-year-old gamer probably would not have heard of them. Uh, they Again, they were like a middleware company. So every time they released a game, if it didn't do well, they would, like, they wouldn't, like, be around. So they were, like, struggling each game to, like, make enough to keep in business. Oh, yeah. Okay, so they made uh, a mediocre <laughs> Superman game for the Game Boy. It wasn't, I mean, it, it was it was a platformer. You traveled from one end of the stage to the other. It was all right uh, for, the, for its time. 
uh, there are two bosses in the game, and it's the same robot you fight twice, and you can beat it by standing in one place and pressing the punch button. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Superman 64 was their next, were their next, their next? Uh, thrusts with the Superman license. This is not the official title of the game. This is the title of the game that was given to it by people who, like, heard of it. The actual name of the game is... just is, Superman. No, it is Superman, colon, the new Superman Adventures. Adventures is misspelled. <laughs> it's supposed to be Adventures. <laughs> Wait, really? Yes. Wait, it's, oh, I thought it was called Superman. It, it's Superman, the new Superman Adventures, but Adventures is spelled Adventures. I, Question. I'm pretty sure it's on the cartridge. It's just called Superman. On the cartridge, That's what I was it's thinking. just called Superman. That's what I was the thinking. official title is on the back of the box, and it says Superman, the new Superman Adventures. Uh, so why do they call it Superman 64? Because it was, because it was the only the Superman 64! Because it was the only Superman game for the N64, and it was easier to refer to it than just saying the Superman yeah. N64. Yeah, it's like, like Sonic, yeah. Sonic 06. Yeah, you know. like it was Sonic yeah. the Hedgehog 2000. Yeah. That when came you name, out in 2006. Name like every game reboot as just people, the original name of the game. I've heard all people also call it Sonic on the 360 back no, in like no, 2006. No one so, calls it that. Back no in the 2006. Back in 2006. Back when the game, back when their only year was 2006, they called Sonic it Sonic Next on the 360. But it was on the PS3 also. Yeah, I don't know. I, that's just what I heard, okay? Superman 64, right? What does everyone know about this game? Everyone knows that you fly through rings and you glitch through a wall and then you die and, and Lex wins. And that's the game, right? Wrong. Half of the game is rings. However, the other half is not rings. So the way the game is structured is that you have 14 levels. Every, every level, like the first level is called a ride stage. This is the stage where you fly through rings and you, you, yeah, you fly through rings, and then you do that, and then you have a little mini game where you have to save some hostages, or you have to stop a car crash or something, yeah. and then you do rings. Tyler? Do the rings exist in canon? The, it, what do you mean in canon? Like, like are they in part the of world the of the game, do the rings exist? Why like, is outside of just being through? like a mechanic? It is not made clear because we are in virtual metropolis in this game. So the plot what? of the game is that you're. Lex Luthor has trapped Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and Professor Hamilton in a virtual metropolis world that Superman has to go through and stop Lex Luthor and rescue his friends. Why so, does he have his powers in Lex Luthor's virtual world? He doesn't, and we will get to that. Well, he kind of does and kind of doesn't. He can, it's, like, it fly still doesn't, ship, bro. It still doesn't make sense. I mean, he can fly, he has super strength, but all the other superpowers... You have to pick up a super token in order to unlock, like you have to, if you want to use your laser eyes, you have to pick up a laser eye token within a level, and then you have a limited amount of laser eyes you can use. You know, you know the Lex Luthor decided to randomly program in a way for the protagonist to fucking kill his enemies? Yeah, exactly. Thanks developers, you fucking retard. Uh, thankfully the laser eyes are absolutely useless because, <laughs> because you have to stand still, squat, and then look at the enemy. And then it's really touchy with really touchy controls, and most enemies are easily more easily be beaten by just flying at them. Lex Luthor's a sadistic cop. The, the the meta of this game is that you fly into your enemies and they die in one hit when you do that. Nice. So half of the game is rings, and then like in the in the right stages you have mini games, and then the other half are called main stages. These are stages where you fight one of Superman's rogues galleries of villain, one of Superman's rogue gallery, like the rogue gallery of villains, you know, like the, the friggin' The rogue gallery of villains. Like, like brain guy, brainiac, uh, parasite, Superman. metallo, Whoa. Lex I, I don't know who any of these fucking people are. You know who Lex Luthor is. Well, yeah, cause Dark I, Side. Just, I oh, hate I, how I know every single villain you've mentioned. Yeah. Check I don't, yeah, I don't know nails. fucking Superman lore, so... Okay, I, I'm trying to remember one. What was the girl Superman that, like, didn't know her powers yet, so Superman taught Super, her how to oh, use it? Supergirl? Super no, not Supergirl. Super it was, like, Girl? Lana or something. I forgot her uh, name. Sh she has a bunch of different origin stories, but essentially, yeah. essentially she was one of the prisoners on Krypton who... Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember her name, though? No. Okay, so her name changes. It's not the same. It's oh, basically okay. the same character, but her name changes. All right, all right. So I don't feel too bad about this. Um, he doesn't feel too bad about this. So, 
Uh, while we're on the topic of like the lore of this game, the game was designed to go along with the Superman animated series that was going on at the time. No. Nice. So instead of having to like watch the cart, instead of having to read all the comics and know about all that crazy stuff Superman's done, his like weird like. Well, he, he had like lawn gear superpowers at one point. He what? Had, like he had some weird stuff he was doing. No, it was landscaping powers, right? And so he had. So you didn't have to do that. You didn't have to read all the comics. You could just watch the watch the TV series that was running at the time, and so you'd be all so, set. So he. <laughs> yes, Jackson. He fucking walked. He has his superpower at one point. That just he just fucking has like. You know those big fucking things that with the water and you know like Minecraft. No, 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 no. He has landscaping powers. <clears throat> oh, Jackson, and he can like so like he has like the force right, and he just like he just looks at the ground and he just fucking. It he, like, was like, probably an, an like advertisement thing. Perhaps it might be. It might have been. I don't know. They were like, yeah, let's make Superman a fucking Earthbender for a day. Whatever, it's fine. But the but the I, if I remember correctly, in the comics, he would like pick up like like trees and then put them in the ground while flying, and he could do that really well. So that was his super, his super landscaping power. Yeah, exactly. Fuck it, I got it, man. So Can I? All right, all right, all right. I cannot all right, see all a right, damn thing. Right. Okay. Uh, have Have I gotten a signal yet and just missed it? Okay. I will trust that I won't miss it. But please don't blind me with the light again. Jackson, you were wandering in camp. Jackson. All the predatory insects. As you were saying. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Rogues Gallery of Villains. Basically, these stages would have like little like you would. It was just like a series of events you had to do. You had to like pick up a key card, uh, talk to Jimmy Olsen or something, fly over and beat people up. It was it was all right. The, the plot of this game is not important. The only thing you really know, need to know is that it takes place in Virtual Metropolis. Interesting tidbits about the game, however, is that the dark, like Dark Side, you know Dark Side. Yeah. Tyler knows Dark Side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Dark Most Side. people know Dark Side. He's I like, know Dark Side. he's like a god of death. He just like can. He's just Superman. He's more powerful than Superman, even. Uh, he, in this game, the way you beat Dark Side is that you fly into him. <laughs> you pick. No, 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 no. I'm not done yet. You fly into him. You pick him up. He t poses as you carry him to the police, who will keep him arrested. You drop them off at the police, and they take care of the rest. Yeah. So they're just like, yeah, we got the god of death. <laughs> yeah, exactly! Okay, do you know what's particularly funny about this? Go ahead. So in the Superman animated series, Darkseid is, like, that's one of the more powerful versions of Darkseid's character. Ex yeah, so yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not like they didn't know the character they were working with. They're intentionally playing on this show's lore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, uh, there's some other stuff. Okay, so there's a level. Wait, where is it a virtual dark side? It's the real dark side, okay. just in a virtual world. Why? Why? <laughs> Question. So I don't fucking know anything about Superman. How d does Lex Luthor cooperate with Dark Side? Lex Luthor is in cahoots with all of Superman's other. Like, there's a level where you're trying to fight Lex Luthor, and the whole level is trying to find him. And at the end, you find out that he's already left, and he, there's a bunch of notes on his table where he that he apparently well. Where like other villains contacted him saying like yeah I got Superman's best friend Jimmy Olsen right here he's not gonna escape from me this time Dark Side right so he just casually is this motherfucker is just casually able to work with the God of Death yeah this is not in the normal Superman lore this I is did that. just this game okay that makes sense this is in the animated series okay though, right? Y All right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Makes Lex Luthor is just like I hate a Superman. Cop. You guys hate Superman. Let's form a supervillain team. You guys, <laughs> exactly. And we're just gonna <laughs> kill all his friends. Kill him. It's gonna be a nice. blast. Okay. So. Right. So that's happening. There's a level where you fight Parasite, and Parasite <clears throat> just walks over to you, tries to punch you, and then sometimes he'll pick up a box, throw it at <clears throat> Superman, and it takes out half his health. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, he'll like there was just a random chance that Parasite will pick up a random box in the room, throw it, and then Superman will like take a bunch of damage from that. It's one of his most lethal attacks, is throwing a box. <clears throat> if Superman throws a box at Parasite, Parasite dies immediately and the level is soft locked. So, so <laughs> it's soft locked? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Why? Because okay, so in that level, you need you need to capture Parasite in a specific cage or something to to like stop him and defeat him. But since he's dead, you can't do that, so you can't complete the level. Oh, why can you? 
I fucking hate that. They, <laughs> they literally would just like, fuck it, we're done with this level, move on to the next one, we're going, let's fuck it, that's fine. We will get to all of this, don't you worry. So, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of crazy stuff that happens in Superman 64. I, I One last thing I want to mention is that, you know what an attract mode is, right? The little <laughs> demo that plays when you yeah. stay on the menu for so long? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't in the attract up, mode for Superman 64, it's a guy playing the first level of the game. He flies through three rings, misses the fourth one, and then just flies at a wall, clips through it, and then they just left it into the game. <laughs> <clears throat> no so do you out. have to do that to beat the game, or is that just a thing? Oh, that's just a thing in the attract mode for the game. You don't okay. have to do that. That's just someone else <laughs> who recorded their gameplay for this game did that. Okay. All right. Oh, so this game was not received very well. Well, um, don't fucking say. There's, by the way, there's an official Brady Games guide for this game. That's just a little fun tidbit I'd like to give you. <clears throat> this game was, there's also a multiplayer for this game that most people don't know about. How does the multiplayer work? Who it does everyone play? It is Bad Star Fox. You oh. fly around as one of Superman's villains. It's four player. You have five characters to choose from, and you just fly around and uh, like as one of Superman's villains. And try to kill each other. Can you like kill each other? Yes, that that's like one game mode. The other game mode is like one person makes rings that the other people have to fly through. Okay. Yeah. One game. Um, so why did it turn out so bad? Well, people. So. A group by the name of Rareware Central was able to pull up a beta for this game. Then they archived it, they restored it, it's all good. Uh, originally, there weren't going to be any rings in this game. You would just have a checklist objective of things to do, and you could fly th freely <coughs> through a, like a very huge like metropolis. You had a lot of space to like fly through. I believe it was like like one of the biggest at the time, one of the biggest like free roaming areas in a video game. So, that sounds pretty, so much better. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty poggers, right? <clears throat> there, so, this version of the game also doesn't take place in a virtual metropolis. It takes place in the real world for some reason. And you would beat up real people. <laughs> Fun. Okay, interesting. Um, what else? You would... Yeah, it, it was just... The, the <clears throat> levels... There's The levels are slightly different. Uh, some of them don't have their collision finished yet. But all in all, the game is a lot more feature complete in the beta than in the original game. Now, I, I want to make an acknowledgement real quick to a man named Proton John. He's been doing a Let's Play of Superman 64 for the last 10 years and he's- What?! <laughs> Dude, no, I was fucking, I was like 12 watching like Proton John play shit with the Runaway guys. He's, what? I didn't even know about that. Okay, so, <laughs> Proton John started his Let's Play in 2011. He still hasn't completed it yet. He just got to level 10. What? <laughs> Is he like, are, still actively there? trying to beat it? Yes. Does that mean that nobody has ever beaten this game? No, people have beaten this uh, yeah. game. The reason that it's taking so long is just for personal reasons. Oh, like okay. he hasn't like he'll just he'll just make an episode and then three years go by and he won't touch the let's play and then he'll make another episode. Because believe it or not, he probably has better things to do. Yeah. <laughs> he got married during the let's play of Superman 64, collecting the one ring that mattered. <laughs> All right. That was a joke he said at one point, wasn't it? I don't think it was. It should be. It, sh it should have been. I, you I would expect him to say something. You gotta like rewrite that. the timeline, you know. So, so the reason I mentioned Proton John is because he had an interview with Eric Kahn. <laughs> he had an interview with Eric Kahn. He was able to get in touch oh, with him to ask him a lot. Yes, he asked him a lot of questions regarding Superman 64 and what was going on with this game. And apparently, the reason this game turned out so bad was because of Warner Brothers, not because of Eric Kahn or Titus. Uh, their their vision for the game was a bit too ambitious for what the N64 could handle, but like the aside from that, like 90% of the problems with this game came from Warner Brothers. One of their requests is that Superman could not beat up real people in the game, so they had to recreate the entire story to uh, to like make it a virtual metropolis and rewrite what's going on with Lex Luthor in this virtual world. That Wait, he, yes, but the people he beats up. Are real people entering this virtual world? No. All the enemies in the game are like virtual. Aside from like the bosses, all of them are virtual people. Okay. But he's allowed to beat up the bosses. He's allowed to beat up Lex Luthor and Metallo and stuff like that, but he's not allowed to beat up like the main. They're like henchmen. 
Okay. So, Why? Warner Brothers is kind of stupid, dude. I don't know. You know, that is kind of true to how Superman acts in the comics. Yeah, it is true. And I believe he acts the same way in the cartoons. <coughs> Um, uh, I mean, uh, 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 freaking, they try to, they try to keep his passiveness to a certain extent. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he couldn't beat up real people. There's uh, a lot of people who, like, fall off buildings and we don't see them die, but you're like, Superman killed them. Yeah, 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 that kind of thing. <clears throat> um, shoot, where was I? Uh... He couldn't beat up real people. He couldn't have full access to his superpowers in this game. Um, what else? Yeah, just a bunch of other weird stuff like that. And so, for whatever reason, they they complied... Yeah, well, obviously they complied with this. And there were, like, so many other requests that he didn't really talk about or he wasn't allowed to say. Because apparently there's still an NDA involved with this game that came out in 1997. I think I forgot to mention that. But yeah... Uh, so, in the interview also, Eric Khan mentions that there are no rings in the game that came out. Meaning that Eric Khan didn't know what version of the game was released. <laughs> Apparently, so, it's believed that he thought the beta version of Superman 64 was the one that got released, and not the one with all the rings in it. Because so, where did the rings come from? What Warner Brothers request led to those? Do we know? We don't know. It, it might be, like, they under just... NDA, <laughs> but it's also possible that, like, the reason for the rings was because the size of Metropolis was just too big for an N64 game at the time, so they made it just, like, shoot, what, what was it? They made, they, like, just had to, like, str like string you through a level. The, it's still pretty big, but they put the render distance so I, low that you had to travel through it at a certain... Yeah? It was procedurally generated rather than generating the entire level all at once. Is that what you're saying? Uh, I don't I don't know quite. Because that would make sense. Because if, it, cause if per, procedurally generated, it's kind of like Minecraft. We're like... Well, it, I mean, if it's chunks. procedurally generated, it's probably more like Fallout, where it's like one map, but they just spawned a bunch of random stuff in it. Okay. And they reused assets and stuff. But the renders, that, I know that the render distance is really low because as soon as you exit like the main area, you have like a one foot ring around you of fog that you can't see through. Yeah, I know. So that. everything else exists. It's still generated. It's just not rendered. So it's taking yeah. up less memory. Yeah. And so okay. I believe because I, it's my theory that because of this, they had to put the rings in to sort of guide you through the level, and that sort of became its own thing, where half the game was now rings. Well, because like if the rings are in it anyways, you might as well incorporate it into the mechanics yes okay so yeah that's why that's why superman 64 turned out as bad as it was uh eventually they would try to get blue sky software to make a port of superman 64 for the ps1 um yeah are you guys are you guys all right yeah uh, yeah i'm just walking yeah. around keeping mosquitoes off. yeah yeah blue, blue sky software <coughs> would try to make a, a, a version of this game for the ps1 they were trying to port it, but because the game turned out so horribly, they said, screw it, we're making our own game, and it's going to be way better than your lame thing that you created. So they started work on another Superman game for the PlayStation 1. All the footage that we have of this looks incredible. Like, you had full access to your superpowers, there was a huge world to explore, the game would focus on puzzle solving rather than fighting enemies. It was great. The license for Superman 64, ex or for Superman, expired during the development of this game, and when trying to renegotiate a contract with Warner Brothers, they refused because of how poorly Superman 64 did. Oh, so because no. of how badly this game did, we didn't we didn't just get one bad game, but we lost a good one. <coughs> uh, so like. I but what the fuck? They didn't, like, go to Warner Brothers and show them what they had in the fucking works. Like, look, look, this shit is good. It's better than the fucking garbage over there. And they still said no. Yeah, they still said no. It's like, y'all could have made fucking money. But no, fucking yeah. right. So there's, there's, a, there's a lot of weird stories with Warner Brothers making, trying to make video games for DC characters. At one point, they tried to license out their three big guys, Superman, Batman, and The Flash. <coughs> They gave Superman and the Flash to, like, Brash Entertainment. And the Flash game started development but stopped early. 
The Superman game got really far into development, but eventually they ran out of money, and so they were trying to find a new buyer for this game. As they were doing this, all the employees weren't paid for all the work they were doing. Eventually, they couldn't find a buyer in time, and all the employees sued them out of business. Oh my god. That's like the worst way. Do we know anything about what was going to be in this game? Uh, it was essentially, it was like a more late-gen version of that PS1 game. Okay. Where you would fly around a world, you would fight your bad guys, it was more puzzle-focused, huge world exploration, pretty cool game. So this game is still taking its roots from Superman 64? Well, not, I don't think directly, but they, there's at least some influence there in terms of what the original idea was. Okay. The Batman, how to make it not suck ass. <laughs> the Batman license became Batman Arkham Asylum. <laughs> Which was good! Which was good! Good is an understatement. It's probably one of the best stealth games ever made. It's probably one of the best game superhero games of all time, I'd say. Arkham City it. is a better superhero game. It's not a better stealth oh, yeah, game, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a better okay, superhero yeah. game. I, I, but I mean, like, uh, okay. This, the Arkham franchise in general is probably yeah. the best series of superhero games. And because Warner Brothers found that gem they were looking for, it seems that they stopped trying to look for other people to develop superhero games for them. Yeah, so they, they found it. Yeah, they found it, so they just stopped developing Superman games. And so there will never, ever be another Superman game unless Warner Brothers or DC Comics or whoever's in charge changes their tune. Woo. We are stuck with Injustice and Lego <laughs> Batman 2. But that guys, is all we're getting. We're getting an Injustice movie. What about Mortal Kombat oh, versus DC Universe, bro? <laughs> What about Marvel vs. Capcom? That, oh my God, that fuck, doesn't have Superman in it, you idiot! No, listen, DC vs. SNK. <laughs> okay, last, last, last touch, because we sort of left Eric Khan hanging That's there. Where, thing, what happened to him? He after, came. After, after Superman 64, <laughs> where did he go? After Titus was liquidized, they became Interplay. The company they bought earlier that made Alone in the Dark and Baldur's Gate, yeah. he then started to work on the fall, like the Fallout games. Really? Oh. Well, <clears throat> not the ones you would think of. He worked on sort of the side projects that never got released. So Fallout on, 76. No. Well, <laughs> close. He worked on Fallout Brotherhood of Steel 1 and 2. He worked on Fallout Van Buren. And he worked on Fallout Project V13 which was originally going to be the Fallout MMO before Fallout 76. <coughs> so, Is there almost. anywhere to play any of these games? No, they were all canceled. And what is his company's like relationship with Bethesda? Uh, they seem to just be like side developers, <coughs> like uh, Obsidian was with Fallout. Uh, yeah, uh, New like, like does Bethesda come... give them permission to make this? Yeah, because Bethesda, Bethesda oh. is like the publisher, and like these guys are like... Okay. Developers, yeah. So like, they license their games out to these developers to develop their franchises for them. So Bethesda is paying them, more or less. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And they're funding it, and then they're basically marketing it because it's their franchise. They're they're, but the they're not the ones developing it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um. But they do develop things in house. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So example, right? Random example. <laughs> The Pokemon Company is a joint operation by three different like um like companies, right? It is you have Nintendo, you got Creatures Inc. Creatures Inc. and fucking Game Freak. Nintendo publishes the games, Game Freak develops them, and Creatures Inc. designs the Pokemon. Okay. Yep. So they're like the art people. But yeah, yeah. that's why they're called Pokemon Company. Because it's three different companies. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyways, that was Superman 64, everybody. What do you all think of this game? Super Nintendo.